sequence of text here. Okay? I now know that A inverse must be equal to 7. So let me write them values down again. So what we have now is we have M is equal to 26, the size of our alphabet. We previously chose A to be 15 in the encryption cycle. We chose B to be 7 in the encryption cycle. And we've just calculated that A inverse is equal to 7. So actually the values we're going to use in the decryption phase are M, B, and A inverse. Because we know from our formula that the plain text is equal to A inverse times the cipher text minus B modulo modulo M. Okay. So let's take our first piece of ciphertext, okay? Our first piece of ciphertext is X, okay? So what we know is C, uh, the ciphertext is X from a numerical representation that's equal to 23, okay? So we have C is 23. So the plain text should be P should be equal to A inverse, which is 7, times C, which is 23, minus B, which is 7, modulo our alphabet size which is 26. Okay so let's have a look at this inside the brackets we have 23 minus 7 gives us a value of 16 and when we multiply that by 7 that gives us a value of 112. So we have the plain text must be equal to 112 modulo 26. Okay well how many times does 26 go into 112? Well it's 112 divided by 26 goes in approximately four times so what we know is that 112 must be equal to 26 times 4 plus some remainder. Okay, What's the remainder? Well, 26 times 4 gives a value of 104. So we have 112 must be equal to 104 plus a remainder. I think clearly you can actually see in this particular case that the remainder must be equal to 8. Yeah, So we have 112 is equal to 104 plus 8. So our remainder is equal to 8. So our plain text P must be equal to 8. Okay, And when we look 8 back up on our on our, I suppose, our encoding, or in, in relation to uh, how we encode our, our, our characters, we have the the character with, represented by the number eight. Okay, is the character i. That's equal to is equal to i. Okay. Let's do another example. Okay. Let's take the next character that we have. Okay. So the next character that we have is is h which is represented as a 7. Okay, so let's keep in mind that M is 26, A is 15, B is 7, and we also have A inverse is equal to, is equal to 7. So when the cipher text is a H, which is equal to 7, okay, the decryption, the plain text, well, the plain text is got from the formula P is equal to A inverse times the cipher text minus B modulo M. So our plain text must be, well, the plain text must be equal to A inverse, which is 7, times the cipher text, which is 7, minus the B value, which is 7 modulo 26. And what's that give us? Well, that gives us 7 times 0 modulo 26, which is 0 modulo 26. Okay, so when I divide 26 into 0, what's left over? What's the remainder? Well, 26 into 0 goes 0 times, with a remainder of 0, so P must be equal to P must be equal to 0. Once again, when I look this value up on my, on my encodings, Z, uh, 0 is an A, so what we know is that the plain text is, is, equal, to, is equal to A. Okay? Uh, let's do one more example of the decoding. Okay, uh, so let's just take, let's this time take our F, okay, as our cipher text, and let's see do we get M back as our plain text. Okay, so we're taking F. So the cipher text that we're going to take is C is equal to F, and that has a numerical encoding, F of a five. Okay. So our plain text must be equal to A inverse, which is 7, times our cipher text, which is 5, minus our B value, which is 7 modulo 26. Okay, what's that give us? That gives us P is equal to 7 times minus 2 modulo 26. That means P is equal to minus 14 
modulo 26. Hmm. And this is a little unusual. Uh, what is minus 14 modulo 26? Now we're used to we're used to dealing with with positive numbers. So what we should do is let's make this positive number by adding on a multiple power of 26 to it. Okay. So minus 14 plus 26 gives us a plus 12. So this is congruent. That's what we say. This is congruent to 12 modulo 26. Okay. So actually what we have is that the plain text must be equal to 12 modulo 26. Let me say that again. When we have a negative number here, we just keep adding on 26 to it until we make a positive. Then once we get a positive value, uh, then we can take calculate that positive value modulo 26. Well, 12 divided by 26 goes zero times with a remainder of 12. So P must be equal to 12. And when we look up this particular encoding, okay, oops, we look up the encoding, and when we look up 12, 12 is equal to 12 is equal to is equal to m, okay. Which at this stage uh, gives us, okay, well, our f, which was five, is taken to 12, which is m, so it gives us i am. And if we continue in this fashion, we end up with i am a secret, okay. I know that was a little involved in relation to uh, what we had to do, but maybe what we'll do is let's just reflect back over this uh, once more. Okay. Uh, in the encryption phase, we had a piece of plain text. We encoded the plain text into numerical representation. We took each one of these numbers along with our, our, a, our M, our A and our 7, and we got a piece of, I suppose, we got a numerical form of our ciphertext. We looked the 23 up back on our table to give us the actual ciphertext uh, as a character. In this case was X. The reverse of the cycle is that we take our X's, okay, which is 23. Okay. Uh, we need to know what our B values are and our M values. We have them from our previous cycle. Uh, the ciphertext values are, are in this direction. A inverse is asking us what number do we multiply 15 by and when we calculate the modulo of 15 times this value that we get 1. In other words, it's this multiplicative inverse. In this case, it's 7. Okay, So guys, the, I know the decryption phase or the decryption cycle is a little bit involved and you know we'll probably take a, a few goals to, to master this. Uh, but once again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, my name was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.